Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Public works crews celebrated the completion of the Longview Road project and the beginning of the Troost Avenue improvement project. The 15-month Longview Road project realigned and widened Longview Road between Blue Ridge Boulevard and Spring Valley Road. It provided stormwater and sidewalk improvements. The work was part of a series of improvements originally planned by Jackson County as part of a bond package for the Truman Sports Complex back in the 1970s. The Troost Avenue improvement project will close Troost between 24th and 27th Street for the next three months as crews install new pavement, curbs, sidewalks, and streetscapes. When it's finished, this section of Troost Avenue will be safer and better for pedestrians and also help increase neighborhood interaction. During construction, drivers can detour to Campbell Street. Health Department visitors should use the department's south entrance at Harrison and 24th Streets. Municipal Court held graduation ceremonies last week for successful participants in its Veterans Treatment Court and Drug Court. The programs are two of the city's problem-solving courts that provide services like substance abuse treatment and mental health treatment in lieu of jail time. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Uh, so thank you all for being here this morning to help us kick off uh, what I believe will be another successful uh, summer of Mayor's Night's programs. Uh, last year, with the help of our partners and donors uh, and our partners, KC Parks and Recreation and KCPD, uh, we were able to announce four additional weeks of Club KC, and we introduced some new features uh, to the program, including the Mayor's Night's VIP card, and we added locations, uh, more locations for our young people to go during the summer. Uh, this year we're building on that and taking it to another level. We have even more exciting things to announce for this year. The goal at the very beginning has always been to give our young people a safe place to go, safe place to have fun, some place where it was appropriate for them to be, and a place where they could do some of the things they want to do, a lot of which is exactly what every adult has always done when they were teenagers. They want to go someplace with their friends and hang out, and that's what we did. Uh, when we are seeing a 12-week attendance number hitting uh, 12,000 mark, we know that what we provided was needed and wanted. Uh, those numbers tell us that 2013 was an absolute success, and we have every reason to believe that 2014 is going to be even better. So in an effort to do that, we're bringing back all of the areas that uh, the youth have come to love and participate in and expect. Uh, first and foremost, the most up-to-date information for all the Mayor's Night events, uh, which includes Club KC, Mayor's Night Hoops, Mayor's Night Kicks, Mayor's Night Nets, will be housed and continually updated on my website, www.kcmayor.org slash Mayor's Night. Uh, this is where all the information and registration uh, for the programs will take place. And so we really hope that you will take note of this and go there. Again, the address is www.kcmayor.org slash Mayor's Night. You can also follow the program on Twitter at Mayor's Nights KC and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Mayor's Nights KC. Uh, I'm really pleased to announce uh, that Club KC will be offered again for 12 weeks this summer. Uh, from May 23 at the start until it ends on August the 9th. Following August the 9th, uh, we will once again gather at Union Station where we were overwhelmed with the attendance last year, thousands of people uh, at the Union Station on August 16th this year for Sly's Rock the Block, which is a culmination of all the Mayor's Night's programs. is open to the folks in the city with kids and, and young people who want to come and participate. Mayor's Knights Hoop Basketball Tournament, and Night Kick Soccer Tournament, and the Night Nets Volleyball Tournament all are back. We're doing those all again. Each of these programs has their own specific start date, and they have different times and locations. And so I encourage you to go out and check on that information on the website for that specific information so that you won't miss anything, and that any child, any kid that wants to participate will have that opportunity. 
This has been around for 20 years, Mayor's Nights, and I'm proud that we were able to add to it with Club KC, do something a little new, listening to the kids, and it's worked. Uh, it's a perfect example of building on our past successes and building more for the future because that's the only way we're going to get there. So I look forward to the summer. I'll be attending some of the events at Mayor's Nights. I will not be twerking. Um, I, I tried that once and had to go to a chiropractor. I want to thank everybody for being here today. It's uh, important that you show up to spread the news about the good things that we're doing with kids, not just the bad things. And thank you for doing that. And we will take a few questions. When KCPD recruits graduate from the police academy, they are ready for patrol, right? Well, not exactly. They begin patrolling with a field training officer, and the FTO is responsible for another 10 weeks of training. One of the popular FTOs is Sebastian Hanriot. I've been an FTO now for four years. Um, I've had about 14 new officers that I train. When they come to us, most of the time, they don't know how to get into patrol car. Uh, they don't know how to uh, check the video or drive a light and siren, answer a call, talk to the victim, suspects. They have an idea and take a report. By the time the end of break-in, they have what we call a solo status, which means they can be a police officer on their own on the street. They have to apply on the street what they learn in the academy. And that's our job to make sure they do it and they do it well. Today was a good day when you have a recruit and they are actually applying what you're trying to teach them and they can do it on their own without any assistance or help or any critique. That's a good day for us. What does recruit Wayne Lewis think of the training? Officer Hanarot has been a great FTO, been very professional, he's been a great trainer. I think an FTO that's really good at what he's doing will keep an officer safe <clears throat> and will teach him the skills that he needs to uh, survive on a day-to-day -day basis. He's a great pastry chef from what I hear. Can't wait to try some of his stuff out. Sebastian Sergeant Mike Glass. Generally a good FTO is an officer who has a lot of patience, um, a good knowledge of department policies and procedures, a very good knowledge of the way things are done out in the street and in the field, um, and the ability to teach another adult and to be a leader and a mentor. Sebastian is a very good FTO. I think the reason why people like him is because he has patience and he listens and he also treats people um, you know, with respect. He treats his recruits with respect and he generally cares about them and wants them to succeed. Recruits ride with two different FTOs as a probationary officer. After 30 weeks as a recruit, 10 more weeks as a probationary officer, our officers are ready to begin serving the citizens of Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Summer is approaching and to celebrate, KC Parks has organized many fun activities to satisfy a variety of interests. On Saturday, May 24th, the city's water parks, pools, and spray grounds open for the season. KC Parks operates two major water parks, the Springs in the Northland and the Bay down south, along with five outdoor pools and 12 spray grounds. To learn more about our pools and spray grounds or to purchase a season pass, visit the aquatic section of our website at kcparks.org. Visit the Laura Conyers Smith Rose Garden in Luce Park on Sunday, June 1st and enjoy the nearly 3,000 roses in full bloom. Rose Day events take place from 1 to 5 p.m. in the Garden Center with entertainment in the Rose Garden beginning at 3 p.m. Rose Day is presented in partnership with the Kansas City Rose Society. For more information about the event and the Rose Garden, visit caseyparks.org. Celebrate the completion of the Line Creek Trail on National Trails Day. The City of Kansas City, Missouri and Platt County will host a dedication on Saturday, June 7th at 10 a.m. at the northeast corner of Line Creek Parkway and Berry Road. Following a brief ceremony, attendees are invited to take a walk and enjoy the newly finished 8-mile trail. For all the details, visit caseyparks.org. 
A new website, kcraceday.org, has launched as a resource to locate details about races, runs, rides, and walks taking place on the streets of Kansas City, Missouri. The new site provides information on permitted road-based events and includes a calendar, frequently asked questions, route maps, and registration to receive information for road events that occur in a specific neighborhood or business district. Race organizers can also use the site to apply for a permit and better understand the policies and guidelines for road-based events. Check out the site at kcraceday.org. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. In honor of National Public Works Week, the City Council will recognize the city's 408 Public Works employees next week. Public Works employees monitor, maintain, and repair more than 6,300 lane miles of streets, 620 traffic signals, and 93,000 streetlights. They also collect tons of trash and recycling every day and oversee the planning, design, and implementation of construction projects, which range from curbs and bicycle trails to bridge replacements and the downtown streetcar line. To learn more about the services Public Works provides, visit kcmo.gov and search for Public Works. The City Home Repair Program is now accepting applications. This program helps eligible homeowners complete plumbing, electrical, roofing, and other repairs. Eligible applicants include Kansas City, Missouri homeowners who own only one property, meet specific household income guidelines, and have not received assistance from this program within the past five years. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.